March 3rd, 2017, our hero Link awoke in the Chamber of Resurrection, cold, confused, and unfamiliar with anything or anyone around him. From a certain point of view, he had a similar feeling as we did upon opening this game. On March 3rd, we took our first steps on Hyrule's soil in 100 years. We all remember the moment we took that very first leap of faith off the Great Plateau. With no idea what to expect, no idea what fate lies ahead of us, nor what allies we will gain or enemies we will face. But this familiar yet beautiful world is calling our names and we long for it. Just what exactly is this place? One year ago today, 2017's Game of the Year was released as it was the beginning of a journey that changed many of our lives. There are many ways to experience a video game, especially one like Breath of the Wild. You can go the route of doing the main quest and completing the game as normal, or you can explore the worlds the developer created and see all that this magnificent world has to offer. The side quests in Breath of the Wild show you a whole hidden factor of the land of Hyrule that a big portion of its players don't experience, mainly for reasons such as side quests in open world games are a hassle and out of the way. But to those who took the time and experienced these quests and met the characters, learned their stories, met their families, helped them become better people, find love, build a town, and so much more. One year later, Breath of the Wild currently has two DLC packs, one being the Trial of the Sword pack that included numerous things other than what's just in the title, such as numerous costumes such as the Phantom Armor, Majora's Mask, Minna's Helmet, the Korok Mask, and more that all aid Link in different ways. But clothing isn't the only thing that came along with just pack one. It included Hero's Path Mode, Master Mode, the Travel Medallion, which allows you to place it wherever you'd like and be able to fast travel back to that exact point, instead of having to fast travel to stables or towers per usual. Winter 2017 added the Champion's Ballad DLC. That added much more as well, such as the One Hit Obliterator Challenge, to where you have to pretty much go along the entire Great Plateau again and beat all the enemies in each area. Though you can beat them all in one hit, they can do the same to you. And of course, new clothing that will aid Link are inside this pack as well. It really gives players the desire to revisit and rediscover areas previously traversed already. And even upon completing the Champion's Ballad, Link can obtain the Master Cycle Zero. One year later, people are still, myself included, are exploring everything Hyrule has to offer. Each time you open the game with the intention to discover something new, you will. Hyrule is a kingdom of many people to see and many mysteries to uncover. And to those who have seen a majority of what this land has to show, there are many people who have began diving back in, but switching up the ways to play to keep things feeling fresh and challenging as well. Every time the game becomes less challenging, it's time to add a handicap. In my opinion, the no climbing and no pausing during combat challenges seem the most difficult. Though no game is without its flaws. For one, many returning Zelda fans felt that the Breath of the Wild story was weaker because they focused too much on making extraordinary gameplay. But I will tell you right now, the story in this game is some of the strongest it's ever been in the series. But due to this world being much grander and favoring exploration, the developers make you go out and discover the lore that this world is hiding. Those who feel the story is weak didn't even go out to see what this game really has to offer. There are diaries, notes, rumors all across the world. You just have to go and explore. And I will admit, even I was one of the people who felt this way for a long time. But due to this feeling, I couldn't stand for this to be true. So I dove into Master Mode for my second time playing the game, and during that adventure, I found much more to be discovered. I met people who I hadn't come across even once during my over 100 hours on my first file of the game. We all know what Hyrule is, but what lies beneath its surface? One year later, I'm still discovering more for that to answer. One year ago, I embarked on a journey that changed my cognition on what Zelda games are supposed to be like. I embarked on a journey to save the world and all the people in it from a great evil that wants nothing but to watch people suffer from above. I live streamed this game one year ago today, and I alongside you guys experienced these moments to Together, and I couldn't be more grateful for those who got to be there. If I had anything left to say on this topic of Breath of the Wild, it would be that to those who have played or even haven't played, to pick this game up again and experience it anew. There's much to discover and many questions to answer. If you enjoyed and haven't already, hitting the bell after subscribing will make sure you never miss a video again. Thank you all so much for watching and embarking this YouTube journey with me. My name is Kingdom Ace, and remember my loyal knights to always look skyward.